Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Before I begin this video and show you Photolab 5, I feel compelled to give you an explanation telling you why I'm doing a video on Photolab 5. Because very recently, I stated that I was not going to be doing any videos on any DxO products that includes Photolab 5, uh, Pure Raw 2, and the Nick Collection. Well, I changed my mind and I feel like I need to explain it to you. If you don't want to listen to that explanation, in the description below this video will be a time code. Click on that time code and you'll jump to the point in the video where I actually start talking about Photolab 5. Now, why did I change my mind? Well, I mentioned in the past that there are a lot of post-processing applications on the market, and there's so many on the market, in my opinion, the market can't support all of them. I started to get concerned about DxO because I was emailing them and they weren't answering my emails, and this was going on for several months. Then, somebody emailed me with a problem they were having with Photolab 4, and they mentioned that they tried contacting DxO's customer support and they didn't get an answer. Nothing. No answer at all. So I started getting worried about the long-term viability of DxO, so I decided to stop doing videos on their applications. Well, somehow they got back to them. And they contacted me and they said, listen, we're sorry. We totally redid our customer service department. We realized that there was bad customer service. We totally redid it. Customer service should improve. And as far as your emails to us, we had a person that was assigned to you that person left the company and apparently I fell through the cracks. I was sending emails and they weren't being read because that person left the company and no one like took their email, I guess. They apologized for that. They gave me a new rep to talk to and now I have better communication with DxO. So I decided to do videos on their applications because their applications are very good. With that said, um, in my newsletter, that goes out every Monday. I mentioned that I was going to be doing these videos, but if anyone had any feedback they could share with me about DxO, I'd be interested in hearing. And I, I heard some very interesting things that I think are important and I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, about the customer service. It appears to be spotty. It depends where you live, it seems. Uh, for example, two people from France emailed me and they told me the customer service was horrible. They emailed them and one person didn't get an answer at all. Another person got an answer several days later and it didn't help with their issue at all. And I found this curious because DxO is a French company. Uh, so France, you may not get good customer service. On the other hand, um, I, four or five people emailed me from the United Kingdom. Uh, specifically, I think all of them were in Great Britain. And they told me that customer service was very good. All of them had good experience, like they emailed them and within a couple hours got an answer and it helped them. A few people from the States mentioned that they dealt with customer service and some had a good experience, some had a bad, had bad. So I guess it kind of depends where you live as far as the customer service is concerned. Now this next thing really concerns me. Um, Someone emailed me and told me that they purchased Photolab 5 and they got a license key and they loaded the, the software and entered their license key. And, and for some reason, and I can't remember why, they wanted a refund. And I, I'm under the impression they wanted a refund within a few days after purchasing it, not like two years later. And they asked for a refund and DxO told them, we can't give you a refund because you already used the license key, which I think is ridiculously bad, <laughs> bad policy. Um, so my recommendation is in the description of this video, I have a link to their website, you know, use that link. You can check out their software, all the software I cover that again, is photo lab five, pure raw two and the Nick collection. All of them have fully working free trials. And I believe all of them are 30 day fully working free trials, download a fully working free trial and load it on your machine. Make sure it loads, make sure it works, make sure it does everything you expect it to do before you purchase it and take that whole 30 days to test the software because there is a possibility you won't be able to get a refund after you enter your license key. So um, with all this said, if anyone has a different experience, like you asked for a refund and you were able to get it after using your license key, let us know in the comments. 
If you've tried to contact customer service and they were good or bad, let us know in the comments because I really want to stay on top of this and make sure that I'm doing videos and representing a company that takes care of their customers because this is a reflection on me as well. So I'm going to tentatively do some videos on their applications until I change my mind. <laughs> All right, now as far as Photolab 5, uh, what's new in Photolab 5? Well, uh, they now have um, full Fujifilm X-Trans sensor support. And what, from what I've been reading on photo forums, people who are Fujifilm users are saying that Photolab 5 now processes Fujifilm RAW files as good as Capture One. And Capture One was the gold standard when it came to Fujifilm RAW files. So um, that is new and exciting for Fujifilm users. Now, some other things that aren't necessarily new, they were in like Photolab 4 and that, and maybe you're not aware of it. Um, Pure Raw 2 is DxO software for uh, removing noise from an image, and it works great. It is one of the top three noise reduction software applications, in my opinion, out there. Um, it's built into Photolab, so you don't have to purchase that separately. And if you're used to using light to Lightroom or something like that, you'll be really happy with the noise reduction capabilities of Photolab. Now, again, that isn't new to Photolab 5. That was, I believe, introduced in Photolab 4, but it still is something that I want to mention. Now, as far as the actual Photolab workspace, um, there's actually two modules. You have the photo library module, this is the library module, and you have the customize, this is where you edit your images. In the photo library module, on the left-hand panel, we have our folders. In the middle, we have our images. At the top, we have some before after compare features. We have some zoom in, zoom out features. Uh, to the right here, we have a button that will bring us directly into the Nick collection if you own it. Uh, it doesn't come with Photolab 5. You have to purchase it separately. We have our export button where you can export your images. At the top, you could reset. There's also a number of presets with Photolab 5. If you're into presets, you get a lot with it. Those work pretty well. Uh, the right-hand panel of the photo library module, we have a histogram, metadata info, and keywords all right here. And so it's a pretty typical library module. You can give your images star ratings and pick flags and things like that. So they're pretty cool. Now, as far as editing your images, you do that in the customize module here. And this is pretty familiar, pretty similar to other modules on the left-hand side of other modules and other applications, I should say. On the left-hand panel, we have a histogram, we have a navigator window, we have a history tab, and preset editor here for your presets. Along the top, you still have those compare before after settings, the zoom in, zoom out features. You also have some tools. You have a hand tool, crop tool, white balance tool, a level tool, you have spot removal, and you have a red eye removal tool. You also have local adjustments. I want to mention that included in the local adjustments is that U point technology that is in the Nick collection. So if you're a fan of the U-Point technology of the Nick collection, it's also in Photolab 5. Of course, you have the image in the middle, the film strip along the bottom. At the top, you could reset your uh, edits, and you have those presets that we mentioned before. And then you have your actual tools to edit the image. And by default, when you first go into the Customize panel, you'll have the Basic Tools panel open here on the right. And the basic tools should give you just about everything you need to get a good edit of your image. Now, I do want to mention that if you're coming over from an application of uh, like Lightroom, uh, there is a bit of a learning curve. First of all, the sliders react a bit differently. Their processing in an engine is totally different than Adobe's processing engine in Lightroom. You'll find that the sliders are more sensitive. Just little movements do a lot. Also, they won't have all the sliders you may be used to, like you get a white and black point in Lightroom with a white's slider and a black's slider. Well, here you only have a black slider. There's no white's slider. But you do have some other tools. You have like DxO Clearview Plus and DxO Smart Lighting and other things that you may not be familiar with. And I'll talk about those a little more specifically in a moment. So there is a bit of a learning curve. Now you do have, as I mentioned, when you first bring an image over into the Customize module, you have uh, these basic tools to choose from. You also have some tools that are grouped in tabs above that. Uh, to the left where we have this light tab, these are all tools that affect the tone of the image. Next to that we have color, 
This is obviously anything that affects color. Next to that, we have detail. This includes that deep prime uh, noise reduction. We also have some sharpening tools there as well. Next to that, we have geometry. So if you're a real estate photographer or you do cityscapes and you need to make sure that your corners are square and your verticals are vertical and stuff like that, you would do that here. Uh, next to that, we have local adjustments. And next to that, we have watermarks and effects. Now, one thing... Uh, when this kind of basic panel was introduced, I think it might have been Photolab 4, maybe Photolab 3. Um, what, what got me for a couple minutes is when I first started using it, like I couldn't get it back. Like, okay, where is it? That's light. That's, you know, co or that's uh, color. Yeah, that's detail. That's geometry. Where's that basic tab I had right at the beginning? Well, to get it back, like I have this light tab open now, just click on the light tab again to close it and you'll default to the basic tools. So don't spend a couple minutes trying to figure out what happened to the basic tools. Just turn off the tab that you have turned on and basic tools will return. Now, I did mention that editing will be a bit different. For example, for this image, a typical landscape that I would, um, that I would expose, I underexpose it slightly because I don't want to blow out the sky. So typically what I would do now, if I just come in and start like opening up the shadows and trying to rein in the highlight stuff, a lot of times I find that I have a hard time getting a good edit that way, but there's some other tools that will help you. First of all, this DxO smart lighting by default, that'll be on. And this kind of just make sure nothing is clipping when this is on. Meaning if you are blowing out the highlights, if you turn DxO smart lighting on, it's going to rain in the highlights a little. Or if you're crushing the shadows and it's on, it will help open up the shadows. And you have various ways you could do it. it by default, it's going to use the slight mode. And even if I jump down to strong, you can see there's not much of a difference. It's very subtle in what it does. You also have this intensity slider. And that's it, basically what the mode does. So if I go to like strong, it just moves the slider to a specific position. Slight is a different position. You also do spot weighted where you're actually going to pick a part of your image to look at, like look at the trees right there, and then it will adjust accordingly. It leaves the tool open till you put it away. I'm just going to reset everything at all to begin with. So there is this DxO smart lighting, which helps you get a better overall tone to your image. And by default, that'll be on. Typically, I just leave that on. What I've found works well for me and the way I like to edit my images is the one right below it, the DxO Clearview Plus. By default, that will be off. When I turn it on, you'll see that it really increased the contrast and the saturation of the image. So much so, you can make the argument that it looks worse. Like it looked better there than it does there. But what I found is if I turn that on first, because it does a lot, if you go up here and you start moving sliders around, then turn this on, it's going to totally ruin what you just did. But what I found is if I turn it on first, I get a better edit when I jump up here now and move these sliders than I would have if I did the sliders all by themselves and didn't use Clearview Plus at all. So now when I come in and open up the shadows and maybe bring in midtones a little bit and maybe open up the highlights a little bit, get a better black point, I just seem to get a better edit uh, that way. So that's the way I like to do it. I would encourage you to experiment. Um, with them and just make note that these different like sections have on off switches so like this contrast section is off you have to turn it on to use it right so just make note of that um, also you could change what is here if you you know you never use the smart lighting go to this fly out menu and you could uh, turn on or off things you don't want or if you want something here that's let's say on the left panel like you want um, I don't know let's say the histogram over here you could add the histogram here as well so you could you know you have some ability to customize the workspace to your needs now as far as this image is concerned i'm not really doing a full edit on this yet i'm just kind of giving you the lay of the land of photo lab 5 uh, but to me the white balance is way off it's a little bit too cool and like most apps uh you could affect the white balance one of three ways. You could use the drop down and let's say go to shade and shade maybe a little bit too warm. I could then just move the sliders if I prefer to do it that way. Or I could get the color picker and click on something in the image that should be gray, uh, like the cloud right there, and get a, a 
white balance adjustment that way. Just keep in mind that the tool remains open so it could keep clicking everywhere, wherever, until I get the white balance adjustment I want, then put the tool away. And then you can see how the image kind of moves out a little bit, letting you know that the tool has been stowed away. So there's just a quick way to do adjustments on a landscape image in PhotoLab 5. Now moving forward, I will get into more details concerning these tools that are in PhotoLab 5 over here. Also the specific local adjustment tools because they do work a little bit different than you might be used to in other apps as well. Also, if there's something specific you want me to cover concerning PhotoLab 5, let me know in the comments below. So I'm asking a lot of you. Uh, if you've had experience asking DxO for refunds, let me know what your experience is in the comments below. If you've had experience dealing with DxO's customer service, let us know, good or bad, in the comments below. And finally, what do you want me to cover moving forward with PhotoLab 5? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.